For centuries, humans have gazed at the skies, imagining what it would be like to fly. From Leonardo da Vinci's visionary sketches of flying machines to the first groundbreaking hot air balloon flights, the dream of flight has captivated inventors and explorers alike. Today, we're taking a closer look at the colorful giants that first made this dream a reality, hot air balloons. In this video, we'll uncover the science behind these incredible creations and meet the experts who make it happen. Ready to take flight? Let's go. Good morning, we are at the Great Reno Balloon Race. We got here about 5.30 a.m. The sun is about to come up. It's a little bit chilly and we need to go find our pilot really soon and get ready to go up. Can't wait. All right, we just found our balloon and now we're waiting on the pilot and they're gonna get the balloon ready. here. It is so nice to meet you. Can you tell us about your background and how you got started? Spring of 1978 was when I first started flying balloons. You have to go through a similar curriculum as any other FAA certified pilot, weather, flight operations, rules, safety. You have flight training itself and then you can get your pilot certificate. So soda. Yeah. Okay. okay. Why does the bubble rise in soda? The gas inside the bubble is less dense than the surrounding area. That's exactly how a hot air balloon works. Okay. The gas inside the envelope is less dense than the air outside. We make it less dense by heating it up. That's why you see all the burners. When the air inside the balloon is heated, the air molecules start bouncing around faster and spread out, taking up more space. This makes the air inside the balloon less dense or lighter than the cooler air outside. Because it's lighter, the balloon rises. Here's a fun experiment you could try at home to see this in action. Take an empty water bottle and stretch a balloon over the opening. Heat some water and then carefully place the bottle in the hot water. The air inside the bottle heats up, causing the balloon to expand. Now, put the bottle in cold water and watch the balloon deflate as the air inside cools down. Pretty cool, right? So, now that we understand how a balloon gets off the ground, how do you control it? I have absolute control vertically and absolutely no control horizontally. Mm. Mother Nature does all that work and you go where she says. Balloon pilots can control their balloon's direction, sort of. The wind in the air isn't always blowing the same way at different heights. By raising or lowering the balloon into different layers of air, the pilot can catch winds going in different directions, kind of like using a giant sail to steer. It's like sailing, but in 3D with a 70-foot sail. So how is the weather today? Is it a good day for flying? Oh, here it's, here it's fine. Northern Nevada this time of year is a wonderful time. Looks like a perfect day for flying. Let's get this balloon inflated and climb aboard. The process of cold inflation begins with large fans blowing cool air into the balloon's envelope, allowing it to take shape while still on the ground. Once the balloon is partially inflated, the burner heats the air inside, causing the balloon to rise upright and prepare for takeoff. This balloon holds over 90,000 cubic feet of air. That's a lot to heat up. All that grace and beauty is when we fly, now awkward, okay? The first successful hot air balloon flight took place in 1783 in France, launched by the Montgolfier brothers. Early balloonists used hot air or hydrogen to rise into the skies, with the first passengers being a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. <laughs> Soon after, humans followed, thrilling audiences and making ballooning a popular spectacle. 
To this day, many balloonists carry champagne after flights, a tradition that started when early balloon pilots used it as a peace offering to farmers whose fields they landed in. Speaking of landing, I think we're coming in for one right now. Push me away from the light pole, please. Yes, sir. That was so fun. So there were a couple different landings that we were trying to like spot out. Um, so it was a long flight. Mother Nature kept us going. Without taking out anything and just standing right here, what were the colors of balloon you just flew in? Oh, I love the colors. It was like blue and teal and yellow. There's four colors. And you've guessed three of them correctly, and you've guessed actually the hardest one. Purple. That was the closest one to your face. Yes, purple. <laughs> purple. The name of the balloon is Firenze, which of course is Italian for Florence, which is my grandmother's name and the kids' great-grandmother's name. We want to give a big thanks to Co, his amazing crew, and the Great Reno Balloon Race for their hard work and hospitality. If you enjoyed this adventure, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep exploring with us. And remember, fellow explorers, always be curious and never stop learning. Until next time.